Welcome to Lesson 2-3, Subtracting Integers. Today's objectives are subtracting integers, and we're also going to evaluate expressions containing variables. We have no key terms this lesson, but we do have a key concept, subtracting integers. We're going to use this to transform our subtraction back into addition, something that we learned to do with integers in Lessons 2-2. As you can see in the examples below, uh, we have 5 minus 9 is equal to 5. And then using the concept of additive inverse, we change the subtraction sign to addition, as you can see here. And what we did with the 9 was make it its opposite or its inverse, which is negative 9. In our sec second example, you see negative 2 minus 7. We're going to change once again that negative sign, or subtraction sign I should say, into a positive. We're going to take our 7, which is positive, and change it into a negative 7. And then we're going to use the rules, as we learned in Lesson 2-2, uh, for addition of integers to solve our problem. Let's go ahead and try a couple of these problems on the next slide. Okay, a couple more examples here. Uh, we have a negative 3 minus 5 is equal to 8. The answer is negative 8, but if we are having difficulty doing it this way, we can use the additive inverse. Once again, additive inverse means that we're going to change the subtraction sign into addition, and our positive 5 becomes a negative, and the result will be the same. One more example. 6 minus 8 is equal to negative 2. If you're having difficulty doing that, we're going to use the additive inverse. What does that mean again? It means that we take the subtraction sign, change it to addition. We're going to take that positive 8 and make it a negative 8. And we're going to use the rules that we've learned in 2-2 for adding. That means that we have different signs. So 8 minus 6. Remember, when we have different signs, we subtract. And we always put the big on the top. We get 2. And then we always take the sign of the largest absolute value, which is negative negative 2. Alright, I hope that helps. Alright, find each difference. Problem A, 8 minus 13. Okay, with the examples that we learned, this is the subtraction problem. So what we need to do is we're going to use the additive inverse. The first thing I'm going to do is keep the 8, change the subtraction to addition. I am now going to focus on the 13 and change it to a negative 13. Re-examine my problem, and I notice that I have two signs that are different. I have a positive and a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the two, putting the larger on top, smaller on the bottom. 13 minus 8 is 5. And then for my final observation, I am going to make it a negative 5 because 13 has the largest absolute value. So the answer is negative 5. The directions are the same in this slide. Find each difference. Problem B, negative 4 minus 10. So what I'm going to do is rewrite it as an additive inverse. I have negative 4 plus a minus or a negative 10. I notice the signs are the same, so that means I'm going to take 10 and 4, their absolute values, add them together. Then I need to check to see what sign I'm going to have. And I notice that 10 is the largest absolute value. And that sign is negative. So the answer is negative 14. Let's mix it up. Find each difference. Problem A. All right, so we have 7 minus negative 3. So once again, I'm going to use the additive inverse. 7 stays the same. Subtraction turns to addition. And then our negative 3 turns into a positive 3. Since the signs are both the same, I'm going to go ahead and add. 7 plus 3 is 10. The sign for 10 is positive because the largest absolute value is 7, and the sign is positive. Find each difference. Problem B, negative 2 minus a negative 4. Let's change it to its additive inverse. Negative 2 stays the same. Subtraction turns to addition. The negative 4 changes to its opposite, which is 4. I notice that I have two different signs, so that means I'm going to subtract, put the larger of the two, 4 on top, and 2 on the bottom. Subtract, I get 2. My final answer, let me check the sign here. 
Which one has the largest absolute value? 4. 4 is positive, so 2 is positive, and that is the answer. We are now at our second objective, and that is to evaluate. Evaluate x minus negative 6 if x is equal to 12. I like to think of this concept as plug and chug. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to substitute or plug it in with 12. 12 minus a negative 6. I'm going to use my additive inverse. So 12 plus the opposite of negative 6 is 6. I am going to go ahead and notice that both signs are positive. So I'm going to go ahead and add 12 plus 6 is 18. I am now going to evaluate which one has the largest absolute value. 12, the sign is positive. So the 18 stays positive. We're going to evaluate again s minus t if s is equal to negative 9 and t is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to substitute out the s with a negative 9. I'm keeping the subtraction sign. The t I'm going to plug in a negative 3. I'm going to use the parentheses so I don't confuse the two negatives. Now I'm going to go back to the additive inverse, which we learned in this lesson. Negative 9 stays the same. I'm going to change the subtraction to addition, and the negative 3 becomes a positive. Now, adding integers with unlike signs means that I'm going to subtract. I put the larger of the two, 9 on top, 3 on the bottom. Subtract, and I get 6. Then i got to reevaluate. What is 6? Is it positive or negative? Well, what I do is I look at, and I notice that 9 has the largest absolute value. So that's sign is negative, so 6 becomes negative. In the slide, I'm going to evaluate again a minus b plus c, and I'm going to plug in for a 15, subtract, keep that sign, b, b is 5, so I'll plug that in, plus c, and c happens to be a negative 8, and I'm going to use parentheses so to confuse the two. Now, of course, using PEMDAS, we're going to work from left to right. That means I'm going to concentrate on my first two numbers and the operation. Well, it's 15 minus 5. I'm going to use the additive inverse, change the subtraction into addition, my positive 5 into a negative 5. And signs are different, so that means I'm going to subtract. I'm going to put 15 on top, 5 on the bottom, and I get 10. I notice that, of course, 15 has the largest absolute value, so 10 stays positive. I am going to go ahead and bring down the plus sign and the negative 8. I do not need to change this into an additive inverse because it's already in addition. The signs are different, so I'm going to subtract again. 10 is the largest of the two numbers. I'll put that on top, then 8. Subtract, I get 2. So I have 2 here. All I need to do is evaluate here one more time. I notice that 10 has the absolute largest absolute value, and 2 stays a positive.